All right, Terry, we're going to take a look at this first one because because I love this. You love playing with smart wide receivers. So I want you to take me through this route. Eagles were a zone team. And I had kind of like an inside corner route. So I see this soft part in the zone where I see that quarter defender on the top of the go route. And then I have a corner inside nearest to the sideline. I can either finish that corner route running near him and possibly have him come into the play. His eyes are on Dwayne, as you can see. So if I continue to run, he's gonna read Dwayne's eyes and probably pick this ball off. So I just try to have a good feel for the zone and just be quarterback friendly. As soon as I saw Dwayne rolling out and I felt the zone, I just wanted to kind of settle my feet, give him my chest, and just make an easy throw for him to keep the sticks moving. They roll him out to the right side, and he looks downfield, and he's got a zone. He finds a wide open target. In this concept, is I was actually supposed to run out of the route, but in the film session the next day, my receiver coach thought this was a great adjustment on the fly. You also kind of got to be cognizant of not doing this every time. You got to know when you have that flexibility to do that and when you just need to finish your route. Because if Dwayne's thinking, I'm running and finishing this route, he's going to throw that route outside the numbers, and it could be a pick six. How tough is that? Because obviously last year you played with you know, three different quarterbacks. Well, actually, I should okay. say four different starting quarterbacks throughout the course of the season. How tough is that uh, You know, when you're trying to get a feel and, and run, but you're like, man, I've never run this route with this quarterback. Right. You just want to try to be as quarterback friendly as possible. So let's say if Alex was, you know, taking that rep and we may, may, may not necessarily had that rep yet, I may still try to throttle down, but I wouldn't necessarily stop like I did. But when in doubt, I'm going to try to finish the route, but also uh, be cognizant of the coverage as well. There's nothing that's more quarterback friendly to me than a receiver that can understand pressure and make mm -hmm. themselves available to the quarterback. So tell me in this particular case, I know you were running a hook route anyways, but right. is this something that you tune into here, seeing this pressure and maybe speeding it up a touch to make yourself available to the quarterback? Most definitely. Um, I, I know this is, I'm, a, I'm the hot route read on this, on this play. And um, as you can see, Patrick Peterson, it looks like Byron Murphy are coming on a, on a blitz off the edge. As you can see, that backside backer runs with the slot receiver. And now I know we have a blitz, and this backside backer does not have our running back in man. So you really have both guys. But I'm obviously, you know, in Dwayne's vision, so I want to give him my chest, and I want to give him my eyes as soon as possible. This is the gamble you take, but heads up play by McLaurin. He sees Peterson come off, he breaks off his route, provides a nice cushion there, and Banjo can't make the tackle. When you run routes like this, you know, I try to either put my eyes on the safety a little bit or or just kind of have that feel with the quarterback and knowing, okay, I'm the hot guy um, and I have to be, is, Coach Meyer used to call it in, in, in college, you're fast, but you're not in a hurry. And and when you can do that, these, these become big plays because if you can make DBs or defenses get out of these type of blitzes, exotic blitzes, and you gash them on hot routes, I feel like that really opens up your offense even more and it makes them play more honestly. How early does Patrick Peterson give this away to you, Terry? Like, it doesn't even look like he's playing you here, you know? Yeah, um, he came on a few uh, cornerback blitzes this game, and this was kind of more more than one of the more obvious ones. Uh, but I can kind of see that the way they're rolling. I can see uh, this linebacker starting to cheat in a little bit because my eyes are on him. That's, that's really my route um, to kind of pick him. Mm -hmm. But once I see him run, and I feel, I could feel out of my periphery, Byron Murphy and Patrick Peterson coming, I'm like, oh shoot, I'm the hot guy. But it was kind of just, again, one of those situations where I try to have overall awareness of what the defense is trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish as an offense and give Dwayne a clean throw and then make something happen after. Talk to us about your first objective to rub a defender for the back. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, we're coming back. This is, this is the same play that we saw earlier where it happened to be a hot and you made it quick. Yep. Talk me through this because I think you do an excellent job right mm -hmm. here because too many guys that I see go to rub, mm -hmm. they don't ever run a route connected to their rub. They get so right. caught up with, well, my job is to rub for the back that I'm right. just going to do whatever I can to do that. And you never make yourself available to the quarterback. You do an excellent yeah. job here. Talk me through this. This is a man defense by the Ravens. 
Dwayne has his option to either throw it to me or JD McKissick at this moment. But my main objective on this is to make that DB bubble over the top. And the reason why is because he has a route below the line of scrimmage, meaning he has a flare, he has an out. Something on a pick concept against man, you want the man defender on that back to go over the top when you have those flat type of concepts. At this moment, I see that Marcus Peters is far enough off me that I see Dwayne's eyes on me. I see his body language coming towards me. I want to be quarterback friendly. I want to meet the ball. I want to be ready for that pass as soon as it comes. If Clay is Campbell, who's like eight feet tall, <laughs> getting his hand on it, then that's a you know, six, seven yard completion. Yeah. So essentially, you want to pick and make that defender go opposite of where you want him. Gotcha. So if the ball's going down the field, you want him to go underneath. If the ball's going kind of below or near the line of scrimmage, you want him to go over the top. Great. Beautiful. Highlight of the show right there. Yes, that sir. is going to be, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> that was well, 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 well done. Yes, sir. Backside right here, just this crossing route where it's really, you know, he's reading the zone, I think, here, Terry. So you're choking it down right yep. now. You don't want to get there too quickly right. uh, against this drop of the underneath coverage. This was a drag route, and I obviously can see that it's zoned by the guys are, you know, running and zone dropping. But kind of the same thing, similar to when you have routes against zone, you don't want to run through coverages because you're either going to put the, you know, the quarterback in a tough situation where the ball could be um, incompleted or uh, interception, or you could, <laughs> I, I call it, you could be put in the hospital. So if I continue to run in that, that, uh, <laughs> that uh, I think that's Byron Murphy again. <laughs> you see him on the backside. If I continue to run full speed, he could, he's going to either hit me or take the ball, and I want neither. So um, I just wanted to continue to be quarterback friendly on this one and throttle down. But it's very important on drag routes, especially against zone. You want to kind of get across the defense before you start to throttle down. I think I could have did a better job of even being more pronounced and getting across the field, not necessarily floating. But at the same time, I think it was a good job of Dwayne and I recognizing that it was zone, picking a good soft spot in the zone. And then when you catch a ball in zone, you don't want to dance around. You want to, we called it in college, catch a knife. So you catch it, uh, pick a soft spot and knife. Catch a knife here, Terry. I mean, this is, I mean, this is a big part of the game right here, what you do after contact. So, like, how quickly do you, do you see Murphy here going for your legs right here and you want to take those legs away? Like, is that your first instinct? Yeah, so when I catch this ball, I first want to kind of, uh, you know, put it away. And, you know, I didn't really necessarily have a feel of the guy on the inside. Like I said, as soon as I caught this ball, I felt Byron Murphy right there. So my first objective was try to make him miss and get the first down. Um, but you don't want to also expose the ball to these inside defenders who, as you can see in the league nowadays, guys are attacking the ball. So you want to, you know, after I make Byron Murphy miss, I would like to cover that ball up with my opposite hand to protect it more. But after this, I'm just, just trying to let natural ability take over, but also protect the ball, because if I don't protect the ball in this situation, none of this extra stuff matters. The biggest coaching point I'd have for myself is just try to protect the ball more um, in these situations where you're running through traffic. But I mean, if you could start turning six yard routes into 18, 20 yard games, that's what really can take your game as a receiver to the next level, but it also helps your offense even more. Um, and I felt like early on in the season, this was one of my better year of attacking after the catch. You're in the slot here. Talk me through your technique on this route and what you're thinking here. Yeah, so I have another crossing route. And once I identify and confirm it's a too high zone, my eyes are on that opposite safety a little bit because I want to be able to throttle and be quarterback friendly. I know Dwayne's going to want to throw this early as well because if I don't give him my eyes when I do, if I continue to run, it makes it cloudy for the quarterback on his read, and I'm, like I said, it's going, I'm probably going to be in the hospital. Um, but as soon as I felt the zone and I know I had a crossing a crossing route, um, you kind of have the freedom with the quarterback to, to give him your eyes and, and give him your body language um, in the soft part of the zone. And that could have been a first window throw where Dwayne threw, or it could have been a second window throw, which would have been on the opposite side of that opposite hash. But in this, um, in this 
concept we have right here, and depending on their coverage, it was a first window throw, and I just wanted to kind of throttle to protect myself and protect the throw as well. Tuck over the middle, catching the ball in between the hash marks. So this is an over route. This isn't more of yeah. a vertical route. You are automatically crossing over even into that that 12 yard out on the other side. Yeah, yeah. So this is it's okay. kind of like our inside crossing route. I dive in and I get vertical, kind of hold that safety. If it was against me, I would have flattened it off kind of similarly to against the Cardinals film. But on this one, it was more of a zone concept. And I know based off of the coverage that we saw in film that that was going to be where the ball was going to be completed in that first window throw. Cool. Third and 10 play for Haskins. Drop back. There's a wide open McLaurin at the 50. Space at the 40. Cuts back to the 30. Tackled by three Browns at the 25. During this play here, you're going against press man. Right. You know, this is a mesh concept. And really, in this concept, I am the read. That's Logan Thomas setting the pick, so I have to win. My job now is to take my man player to him. If Logan's lower, then I have to go lower. Then you're closer to the D lineman. It's just a mess. So I feel like, you know, I wanted to give him a little stair step, uh, set him up, because he's thinking, I'm a fast guy. He has to, he has me a man. He has to, you know, chase me across the field. But he doesn't know that that backside guy is, is, is setting that mesh. So as yeah. soon as um, I take him to the mesh, I wanted to basically, you know, we call it slapping hands but rub shoulders with Logan, be as close as possible, so that DB has to really go through him to get to me. McLaurin's gonna release across the field. Logan Thomas is gonna do all he can to avoid any contact. Sets the natural pick by running the route, free and McLaurin one-on-one. -on -one. I love your point there, Terry, because I see too often when people are running these, these rub plays, where they leave it to the rub guy to create the rub. I'm a firm right. believer that it's the guy that's having his guy rubbed that sure. should be doing most of the work. And so, as you said right there, Logan is setting a point. Now it's your job, your job to set up that rub. And you do an excellent job right here where you talked about that little stair step or that little lean up, which forces your defender high. And then I love how you dip, like you lose ground here instead of running into your guy, you go and lose ground, creating a perfect rub and avoiding all of that garbage to allow yourself to come free out the backside. Yes, sir. And then that's, I mean, it's extremely important. And I remember having a rep later on in the season when we had a similar concept. And, um, you know, I kind of depended on the pick too much. And I got covered because I didn't take my man to the pick guy. A lot of people think the pick guy is, is the, his sole job is just to pick. But you can help him out by setting up the, the DB or your man defender uh, by taking him to, to, to where that pick is going to uh, take place. Good coach your point, Terry. Love it. Really well, well, well done. It's a play action to Peyton Barber, and Haskins now throwing out to the left, and he has McLaurin for a gain of nine. I know I kind of have like a, a inside release a hook route. And he's pretty much playing me even, like square up. So in my mind, I want to almost, I want to set up like I'm going inside to get his hips turned like I did. And then I know that hand's coming because I'm at the junction point. Junction point is when you're basically face to face with a DB and the only thing he can do to, you know, to impede you from going up the field is, is sticking that hand out there. And I honestly, I watch that when I'm, when I'm studying DBs. I watch when they shoot their hand, what coverage when they shoot their hand, what hand do they shoot, how often, what depth, all that. You have to study that stuff because if he gets a clean jam on me, I probably, you know, fall back. It, it messes up the timing. It allows him to get back into play. But as soon as I clear that hand, and I could do a better job of clearing that second hand, but at this point, I know I got him because it's like I clear that hand he's in panic mode he has to run so my my biggest you know mindset or my, my mentality at that point once i clear his, his hand is to get back vertical make him feel that vertical that vertical push like, oh shoot he's running a go route you know what i mean um i, I think i could have did a better job of not being as pronounced with the with the throw by we i called it we called it a throw by in college um but i was really knocking his hand off which i thought this was one of my better reps of doing because um you know right there I got that handoff. That's a penalty. He can't keep, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, you, don't, you don't complain about stuff like that. It's press man in the league. But in a press man situation where you have a route coming back to the quarterback, you got to use your hands. You got to be physical. 
Um, so once I got him going vertical, I wanted to, you know, knock off his other hand and, and come out the route quarterback friendly at a negative angle. Just a great route by Terry McLaurin on that play. Is there something that you go into every game, even if it's a run play, where you try to run by a DB or, or something that you try to get into his head with early yeah. in a game? I like, you know, not giving away all my secrets, but I like to set up DBs <laughs> um, throughout the game. Even if it's a run play going to the opposite side and I'm on the back side, I'll set up a release that I'm going to use two or three plays down the line. Every snap is an opportunity to set up something else or um, to put a DB in a situation where he just has to think. With a guy like myself with the speed that I have, I try to make DB's jobs hard and they can't have any time to react and, and they have to be honest in the way I run my routes and my body language. So, because if you're doing that every play or every few plays, then a DB can't just sit there and wait on that pass play. He has to play every play honestly. Big drive right here, fellas. Big drive right here. One at a time, one at a time. 3.29 to go. Ask gets back to pass. Rory got the left sideline to McLaurin. He's got his man beat. Holy cow, what a catch. This kid is special. I mean, he is really a special player. Terry, this next route, I think it's, a, mm -hmm. to me, I think it, it must be one of the favorite routes of any receiver. To yeah. be in the slot, run this, I mean, I call it a spray fade. I don't know what mm -hmm. you call it in Washington. But mm -hmm. like this route, you get grass, you get to use your speed, you get a lot yeah. of space to work. Like, yes. but there's a lot of different elements to this route. So what are you thinking right here? They got you there for a reason. And right. you know, your your outside receiver, running back, mm -hmm. whoever it is, I mean, he's just trying to tie that outside defender up, let you go. Yeah. This is like an inside fade concept, and I knew it was gonna be man just off of the film study. You know, I wanted to get my you know, switch up my release a little bit, give him a little hezzy release. I hadn't gone against this defender the whole game, so I wasn't going to mess around with him. I was going to make him react to me. I don't try to react to DBs. I try to make them react to me. As soon as I get a clean release and I knock down his hand, now he's in panic mode. Um, so when I cleared the defender, I wanted to try to hold that line, stay as close to the, the numbers as possible. But as you can see, the ball's you know, drifting me outside. But as a receiver, if you don't hold that line, then the DB has a chance to get back on that ball. Dwayne threw a great ball on my outside shoulder, and I just want to hold that line. That was a great throw and a great catch by Terry McCorn on that play. But this is pitch and catch if, you, if it's executed correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like and this was one of our, our best reps of the year, Dwayne and I. It's timing, it's landmark, it's poetry in motion when you connect on plays like this. What an unbelievable route by McCorn here. Here's the problem, Terry, is that you run one like that, and then mm -hmm. everybody in the league falls in love with this play, and mm -hmm. everybody runs it, and nobody runs it well. So, yeah. you know, as Baldy said, it's it's become one of the most popular plays in the league, but I can't stand it because <laughs> it's very low completion percentage yeah. because most of the guys, as you were saying, they win, they get impatient, and they start running to the sideline, yeah. and it leaves no room for the quarterback. Right. Right. Your key coaching point right there is hold your line, squeeze the line, because now, like you said, how's it get any easier than this? You're all the way in by the numbers. I've got all that room on the outside to throw it, but that to me is the fatal flaw of this play is guys just continuing to fade as opposed to treating it similarly to an outside go route where you're like pushing in, almost trying to stack him and hold that distance on the outside. Oftentimes guys, get in a rush they're like okay I, I know i got man i know it's a post high safety and the receiver's mind is like this is money you know what i mean but if i were to run straight outside that db you know guys in this league are fast they're gonna just wash you to the sideline and you know i'm on the sideline trying to get back into the ball and it's just a, it's just a lot harder than it needed to be